Hello everybody, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. Uh, this is video 3F, uh, ropes, pulleys, and multiple objects. Alright, so what we're going to look at is uh, how Newton's laws apply to multiple objects. Uh, frequently these objects are going to be connected or attached by ropes or strings or cables uh, or some other flexible sort of connector. Uh, sometimes these connectors will be strung over pulleys um, and before we apply Newton's laws to these types of situations we need to look at uh, some of the assumptions we're going to make about ropes and pulleys. Um, again we're going to use the term rope uh, to apply to any long thin flexible sort of connector. Okay, so our first assumption, uh, we're going to make the assumption that ropes uh, have no mass. Uh, somewhat unrealistic um, assumption, uh, but what we can assume is that the rope mass is so much less than the objects that it's used to, to connect uh, that we can ignore it. So uh, we will assume that ropes have no mass. Um, second assumption is that ropes can only pull. Uh, this is actually a very realistic assumption. Um, if you've ever tried to push somebody with a rope, you know what I mean. So ropes can only pull. Uh, what we're going to say is that ropes pull inward uh, with the same tension at both ends. Uh, again, uh, not quite realistic, but the difference is so small from one end to the other uh, that we can ignore it. So we have, once we make assumption number one, we can then make assumption number three. Uh, four. Ropes provide a, a tension force that we're going to call F sub T that acts along the direction of orientation of the rope. So this is a realistic assumption. Um, if a rope is oriented horizontally, it will exert a horizontal force. If the rope is oriented vertically, it will exert a vertical force. And if it's at any other elevation or depression angle, it will um, exert a force along that same direction. So whichever way the rope is oriented, that's the direction of the force it will exert. And the fifth and last assumption is that uh, ropes do not stretch or deform in any way. Uh, again, this is unrealistic. We know that they would realistically stretch under tension, uh, but we can say that the deformation is small enough to ignore. Okay, so here's uh, this sort of um, situation. We have uh, two objects, an M1 and an M2, and they're connected by a rope. And uh, there's an applied force, a horizontal applied force, that's going to accelerate these things across the uh, surface, which has friction. There's a coefficient of friction associated with the surface. So first we need a free body diagram uh, for each object. So we'll start with uh, M1. Um, some of these things you've seen already. Uh, we know that FA goes on the free body diagram. We know that FG uh, pulls down. We have Fn1, the normal force from the surface. And of course we have a friction force <coughs> uh, opposing the motion, so it points to the left. Um, the key thing here is that the rope, we know that the rope can only pull. So the rope is going to pull to the left on M1. Right. So here's your Ft pulling to the left on M1. Uh, note also that these Fn, Fg, Ff, uh, they get subscripted Fn1, Fg1, Ff1, so that we know which, uh, which object we're talking about. When we look at the mass M2, uh, the tension in the rope pulls on M2 to the right. Okay, so again, the rope pulls with the same tension at both ends. So it pulls inward. That means left on M1 and to the right on M2. Uh, the other three forces we're already familiar with, Fn, Fg, Ff. Again, subscripted 2. Notice also that the applied force is only felt where it is applied. So it's applied to M1 and not to M2. M2 does not feel the applied force. Now, we write force equations for each mass. Again, we know how to do this already. So to the right is positive, to the left is negative, equals ma. The 
objects will accelerate to the right. Up and down, it doesn't, they don't accelerate at all. So Fn1 minus Fg1 equals zero. When we look at M2, now Ft is in the positive direction. Ff2 is in the negative direction. And then again, positive minus negative equals Ma. Uh, again, we specify M2a in this equation and M1a in this equation over here. Uh, up and down for M2, just like M1. Doesn't accelerate, Fn2 minus Fg2 equals zero. Now what we'll see is that the y direction force equations are not terribly interesting, but the x direction uh, is where the action is. The object is accelerating that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the two equations together. Typically, what we're gonna be dealing with uh, in this kind of situation is two equations and two unknowns. These are the two equations. Each object's force equation in the direction of motion are going to be the, um, is going to constitute a system of equations. And there will be two things that we don't know. Typically, the tension force is one of them. And what we find is that when we add the two equations together, because the FTs are the same at both ends, they will cancel each other out. So we have FA minus FF1 minus FF2 for the left side. And then when we add the right sides, we have M1AX plus M2AX. Uh, we also want to note uh, that because the rope doesn't stretch at all, uh, whatever acceleration M1 has, M2 will also have. So they will both accelerate at the same rate. These A sub X values are the same. So we can factor it out, gather the other terms, and this is my final force equation for the entire system of two objects. All right. We would then <coughs> determine the friction forces in the normal manner, mu times Fn, because they're moving. Solve for A sub X, and then, as necessary, put it back into either of the individual objects' force equations to determine the other unknown, which is typically the tension force. All right. Now, when we start talking about pulleys, there's a number of assumptions that go with them as well. <clears throat> uh, number one, pulleys are massless and frictionless. Uh, not very realistic, but once again, uh, we assume that the mass of the pulley is much less than the other objects that are involved in the system. Um, all pulleys have some amount of friction, but really good ones have very little. Um, we will use some very good pulleys in our laboratories, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, number two, pulleys only change the direction of the rope's orientation. The magnitude of the tension in the rope doesn't change. Uh, this is a realistic assumption once we accept that the pulley has no mass. So all it will do is change the orientation of the rope, and therefore the direction of the tension force it exerts. Uh, the third assumption, the rope or string does not slip on the pulley. This is a realistic assumption. If it does slip, then the pulley's not doing its job. So we can assume that the rope just glides along the pulley and turns the pulley as it goes. So here's a, a typical situation that might have multiple objects in a pulley. We have an M2 up here. We have an M1 hanging here. And then the string, which here's the string or the rope, is draped over a pulley. <clears throat> when we release this system from rest, M1 is going to accelerate down, M2 is going to accelerate to the right. So when we look at the, the free body diagrams for M1, all we have is FG1 pulling down and FT of the rope pulling up. There is no normal force because it's not on the surface, there's no friction. Um, there is no applied force. When we look at M2, well, the rope is horizontal when it attaches to M2. So we've got an FT pulling to the right. Uh, it's on a surface, so we've got FN and FF associated with object two, and then we've got FG2 pulling down as we usually do. And what we would tend to do here is um, combine the equations. We would see that uh, M1 does not have an x-direction force equation because there are no x-direction forces. So 
what we would find is that the vertical acceleration of M1 down would equal the horizontal acceleration of M2 going across. So we would combine the force equations in the direction of motion to, to form our system of equations. Okay. So to summarize, when we have uh, multiple objects with, uh, with or without pulleys, uh, we construct a free body diagram for each one. We know how to do that already. Making sure that we include the tension pulling inward at both ends of the rope along the rope's orientation. Uh, we write force equations for each object, which we already know how to do. And then we combine those force equations, uh, particularly in the direction of motion for each object, uh, to eliminate an unknown or, or solve the system of equations. All right, so that's it for multiple objects. Until next time, enjoy. I'll see you again soon.